You click this video to find out how to make an icy polar environment, and I won't waste your time. I'm about to show you why I made certain choices, what I've learned along the way, and how you can do it too. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how I did it and probably be able to get an even better result than I did. So stick around because we're going to cover all of this pretty quickly. Let's jump in right now. I usually start with references. I find that it's indispensable for me, but you do you. I looked up ice for this, but you can look up Minecraft or cats if you want. Here's a nice image of an iceberg shelf. Notice a few things first. Everything reflects the sky. If we start here, things become simpler. Ice traps light, so pay attention to subsurface scattering, like you can see here. The blue is the light entering, bouncing around multiple layers of crystalline structure and exiting. It makes for a cool effect that I'll show you how to use in Blender in a bit. Lots of these images have some calm water. It can get choppy as there are some freak storms at the poles, but we can get by with some calm for this. Here's another image. Look how dark the water is. It's reflecting the sky, but also a lack of light in this case. I'll show you a quick way to make this work for our scene later. Here's another image. This one has some nice breakup where the ice breaks off the main body. We'll address this too in a pretty easy way, and I'll address some concerns about this as we go. I go over more reference breakdown on Patreon in a one hour mini course on this scene, but this is YouTube, so with these few points in mind, let's jump into Blender. This works with most versions, but I'm in 3.0 for this video. 3.1 will have caustics, and that'll make things even cooler, but we can go pretty far right now. Zero out the camera and point it down the y-axis, then raise it up a bit. I chose 3 meters because that's probably where you'll be holding the camera on a ship, or piloting a drone from, or throwing up over the side. I, 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 don't, I don't know you, but I'm going to go with 3 meters. Make the camera a wider angle if you want. Let's make some ice. There's a really cool add-on called Ant Landscape that ships with Blender. Go to Preferences, Add-ons, and enable it. Now, when you add in geometry, you get this feature. Don't click on anything yet, and go down to the bottom where the options are and expand it. The Mesa option works pretty well for this. It looks ice blocky. Yes, that's a word. The more subdivisions you give it, the better it's going to look, but it's going to be harder on your computer. Adjust accordingly to your own system or suffer the consequences. Noise gives you more or less shelves, and random seed changes the layout. Delete the bottom, and you have the top of the iceberg or ice shelf. You can choose to model the bottom if you want, but in this scene we're just concerned with the tip. Now, place a few of these around and arrange a decent layout. Then add in a plane for water. You can use an ocean here, but a plane should be fine to keep things light while we look dev this for right now. Make some more ice blocks and pull them under the water so just the tops stick out. This will add the low breakup. We can use larger and smaller ones here, and it can be relatively convincing. If you find that you want more granular breakup, feel free to model little chunks. Put them in a collection, and you can even scatter them with geometry nodes if you want, especially around the bigger ones. I kept it simple here. Now, let's add in an environment light. I love HDRI as it adds in light and reflection, and reflection is everything here. You can grab any sky image you want. Polyhaven has a whole lot you can download, and they're really generous. I chose a sky image I liked, then dropped it down on the z-axis just a hair to get rid of the harsh horizon. Switch to Cycles Render Engine here, as it's really nice for this. It'll take longer to render, but it looks really good. You can use Eevee here if you want, but I chose Cycles for the look I wanted. Position the rotation however you want it, and begin adding the shaders. The water reflects the sky, so make it dark, and pull the roughness down to your liking. You can add color if you want, too, to art direct it, but the really dark values worked here for me. Now for the ice. It's all about subsurface scattering. Eevee is faster at this, but Cycles looks really nice. Turn subdivision scattering up to 1. Make it slight blue in color if you want, but not too much though. Back off the hue or you're going to get this, and, and this sucks. You can leave it white and control it with other parameters, but I found slight blue worked. Now, play with the radius numbers for a while and really dial it in. Add some lower roughness values too to make the ice glimmer a bit, like real ice does. Now you can add in some noise to the water using a bump map and that'll give it a bit of roughness. You can animate this by using 4D on the noise as well, and use a driver by entering hash frame and multiply this to slow it down if you want. To get more breakup in the ice, you can use a rocky displacement map. I grabbed one from ambientcg.com. Any rocky displacement map will work. For this, I tried bump mapping first and used generated for mapping. When it looked too weak, I added a displacement map and it looked way better. A little bit went a long way. To set up displacement, I made a whole video on it linked above. This will give you a really good understanding of how to use displacement in Cycles and Eevee. I also detail part of it on Patreon in a much longer format if you want. The trick is to make sure experimental is on, material is set to bump and displace or just displace, and you can use adaptive subdivision on your objects that you want to displace. 
Now that I was happy with this, I added some fog to the horizon using a cube and a principled volume shader and a whole lot of tweaking. I then rendered it out and brought it into DaVinci Resolve. This is where I usually end up. It's a whole other program, but worth learning, unless you already have After Effects or Nuke. Blender's compositor is also set to catch up in a big way, so that's really exciting. I ran this through, tweaked the colors to my liking, and not bad for the time I put in, which for this was a little over an hour. I'd also done this one, which I liked as well. The trick to any environment is to keep tweaking things until you're happy, and one last addition will help that I'll show you in a minute. I can obviously keep going and make this way better, but these techniques get me really far into the look and hopefully can help you do the same. I love helping, so if you hit like and subscribe, it'll help me do way more of these and show me that some of you actually want this content. Penguins. That would make everything better. Penguins. Or no ice at all. But let's stay positive. Thanks and Happy New Year.